It was Wednesday the 24th of July 2019, Ireland's first test at this wonderful stadium and their third international at Lord. 20 days previously, England were celebrating World Cup success on this very, very ground. The sun was out, the stands were packed. It was a party-like atmosphere, a party that Ireland temporarily gate crashed. Now it's time to meet the man of the moment, a man who knows this ground so, so well. He has taken hundreds of wickets for Middlesex, but on this particular day, he was about to make cricketing history. Yes, <laughs> legend. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to, Good see, to you. see you, brother. You right? Still taking polls. Thousand. Still trying my best. Good to see you, my friend. Cheers, mate. This is a bit of a different one for you. It is, the yeah. Away, the away side. Yeah, back to the away team. Yeah, we haven't done that for a few years. Always, yep, yep. Always we wouldn't have done this much. Yeah, always got to remember which way to turn when you come in. And the away shed. Yeah. That day for Ireland. Yeah. For you telling the boys, right, this is what it's all about. What was the feeling? Like coming into the dressing room of that two or three days before that game, preparation, training, getting accustomed to this totally alien environment, really, for all the boys. Yeah, I think sort of the whole build up towards that kind of test week is great because you're here training, you've got two or three chances to have lunch upstairs before the game's so even no, started. I you yeah. bring up lunch. I'm surprised it's taken that long for you to mention the lunches. Yeah, so that was good. We'd train in the morning and then have lunch afterwards so you wouldn't even have to worry about playing. I'm trying to give the lads as much knowledge and experience as I could uh, leading into that week. You know, maybe a few of them might have played at Lords, but not that many. I think the one thing that helped myself was knowing that more than likely we were going to be bowling first. Because I knew we were going to bowl first, the wicket was a bit green. Um, and I also knew that England liked batting first here, so um, I had a fair idea that sort of I'd be bowling that first ball that morning, which, which kind of helped ease myself and maybe the bowlers into it. Do you think that helps as an 11, when there are nerves about, and as yeah. you said, even your experience and William Porterfield, Kevin O'Brien, all the hundreds and hundreds of caps, get out in the field together. Let's, let's get over this initial kind of stage together and get through this, as opposed to two batters going out nervous and losing a couple of weeks of service. That helps team. Yeah, I think so. I think it was important that we were all sort of stuck together. We spoke about, the feelings that it may well be before the game and blokes got stuff off their chest as in you know a few people said they were quite nervous and quite apprehensive difficult about Difficult to do. Difficult to do for a yeah. professional sportsman with the bravado yeah. to kind of open up and say listen guys I might need a bit of help. Now you're bowled up first. Yeah. You've done it millions of times. What's going through your mind now? You're coming down these steps, you know you're going to bowl to. Are you already got your plans in place that first ball, top of your mark, or where's the head? Yeah, I think so. I think sort of you need to almost try and be one step ahead of the opposition. And so you've done all your video research, maybe the night before, the day before. You've gone through your plans with the bowling coach. Um, you've spoken with the rest of the bowlers. Um, and then it's just about executing it, as you say. It's kind of trying to get rid of all the nerves as you walk through. There's members everywhere. And this, is, this is the moment, I suppose, that really just encapsulates playing the Lords. Yeah. International cricket, you open this door, yeah. or it's open for you, and there are just hundreds of people yeah. clapping, cheering, wishing you the best. Does it bring back your memories now? It is, yeah, it does. I mean, it's a fairly historic place, um, even when it's empty. But when it was packed that day for a test match, it was incredible feeling and I think it's sort of something that all the guys who are lucky enough to experience uh, will never forget. This is the case just getting out of the pitch at this stage you've done all the prep, you've said it, you've done all the practice, you've had your team meetings, I know you're a big man for team meetings, you <laughs> love studying the opposition, but at this stage you, when you've had the adulation yeah. and, and had all the support from all the, the well wishers, you just want to get out there in the grass. Yeah, I think that starts at probably 10.30 once the toss was decided, once we knew we were bowling kind of just mind is focused on getting out there. I knew I was going to be bowling the first ball. I knew that Jason Roy would be on strike. Did you have success against there. Jason in the past? County cricket? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, often he'd be back at sort of five or six when we when we played against each other before, so not often with the new ball. So well, he's destroyed me a couple of times. He can he can hit the ball a long way, and when the ball's a bit older, when he's sort of back in the middle order, then it's you know slightly different story to a green wicket at all. Debutant as well, though, of course. Yeah, making yeah. his test debut. Yeah. Great to get your insight, Mertz, and hear about all the preparation that went into the day. It's time now to have a look at all those beautiful wickets you took here at Lords. Big screen, all your wickets, all five of them. Oh wow, that's yeah special. I've watched it a few times, Have but you? never on a screen this big before. So yeah, a little private audience with myself, which is uh, interesting. Right, great man, talk us through. Talk us through every single bit, as much detail as you want. Let's start <laughs> How long have we got? As long as you want. The world <laughs> is your oyster. Um, I think you know, Jason Roy was the first one. Just a nice kind of outswinger. Yeah, luckily he sort of nicked nicked a really good sort of outswinger and, and Sterlo did the rest of the slip. It was it was almost Middlesex against Surrey, wasn't it? Yourself and Paul Sterling, who spent a lot of time here at Middlesex against Jason Roy of Surrey. Yeah. Rory Burns, uh, he was the most established opener in the English side, established top three, really. He was playing seventh game. Uh, a lovely dismissal outside edge. Yeah, it's sort of something similar again to the left hander that I've I've tried to work on. Um, almost try and swing the ball back in as much as I can, but with the odd one that nips away, and um, you know, luckily enough, that was that was the one he edged, and, and Gary Gary Wilson took a you know a good low catch. Um, but I think that was the way sort of I was going to get Burns out. He's pretty strong on his legs there, so anything sort of outside of his eye line in, in the channel, I felt I was in the game. Uh, Johnny Bairstow was number three. I think that probably my most enjoyable one. Uh, just in terms of sort of what the ball did, it looked to shape away and then get back a little bit and um, found a sort of a gap between bat and pad and just hit the top of off stump, which is what we as bowlers generally try and do most of the time. So yeah, I think that was the most pleasing one because as you say, we've got the openers early and, and sort of Johnny's a pretty destructive yeah. player again in that middle order. So anytime you can get him out early, you're, you're very happy. So you got three. You're dreaming at this stage, I suppose. Thinking in the back of your mind, maybe get five. The fourth one to go. Fourth was Wokes. I think by that time I would sweated a couple of litres worth of sweat. Very warm. It was. It was very hot. Um, it was a hot day, and I think I was probably in about my sixth or seventh over there. So, I kind of thought this is as good a time, you know, to try and get five in a spell as I'll ever have. So. Yeah, Wokes was next. Um, there was a bit of a question mark over it. It was an LBW. He sent it upstairs? He sent it upstairs. It got given out in the field. Alan Dar, I think, gave it out. Um, and then got sent upstairs and, and luckily was catching enough of the top of the stumps for it to be um, the decision to be kept on field. So Wokes sends it upstairs. Decision upheld. He's gone. You've got four. Sniffing five. Talk us through the fifth. And the most important. Oh, I was pretty tired by that point, but there's no way you're going to get the ball out of my hands there. And I remember William Porterfield sort of asking me um, how I was feeling after the fourth one, knowing that I'd just tell him I'll be fine and I'll crack on because, you know, desperate the chance to get your fifth wicket in a test match at Lords is, is something you're not going to turn down. What a beauty because the previous ball shaped back in, yeah. looking, for the, looking for the left hander with the heavy head falling over, and then the next one just nips away. I actually didn't hear him nick it, if I'm completely honest. Um, I kind of ran through, saw the ball of beat in the bat, ran through as normal, then saw Wilson chucking it up and the slip's kind of going mad. So I just carried on and ran through. I didn't realize he'd actually nicked it at the time, but yeah, I mean, what a special feeling. It's great memories to see this again and uh, go back through those emotions. And Karina and the kids were here? Yeah, yeah, the family were here. so. I could hear her, she was in the box around you could hear there her, could you? I could hear her amongst <laughs> 30,000 people. Surprise, um, But I think sort of the most special feeling was walking down. I was walking down a fine leg after that over. I felt like the whole this side of the ground stood up and pulled me in. It just, yeah, brought, brought back some real, real good memories. So obviously, fairly recently in uh, Test cricket, the bowler could lift the ball. Yeah. Because there was, batters had their hundreds and their fifty, but bowlers had nothing. So yeah. to lift that ball aloft, yeah. Like 30,000 people? Oh, it was magnificent. It was, as I say, I've, I've never had such a special feeling um, 
in a game of cricket in my life. So yeah, walking back down there and then walking off once we'd dismissed them um, just before lunch was, yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. Up onto the honours board he goes, Tim Murta, for his five wickets. You've come up, you've, you've bowled in and out, everyone's buzzing, the dressing yeah. room is probably hopping, bouncing. You walk in, what, what do you see? So our team manager, Chris Siddle, there was a bit of sort of physio tape. You might have seen it with other kind of teams and other players. There was a bit of physio tape. There was where the name is now and sort of in pen had those exact um, sort of words. So he'd written them up by the time I got up to the dressing room, which was a lovely touch. Um, and then obviously came back a couple of days later to see it sort of go on for real. But yeah, walking in, you know, every, just sort of seeing everyone's beaming faces and everyone's so happy and um, it was a real buzz. And the fact that it was lunchtime as well was, was an added bonus as well. You could tuck into lunch because you you, <laughs> you're hoping the batter's going to go out and do a job though, so you could tuck into a nice lunch. Yeah, I can't remember what we had that first day, if I'm honest, but I remember. It must have been a soup of the day. Yeah, I think it was a proper three course meal that I had. Um, I helped myself with some ice cream and some dessert as well. Um, but it was, yeah, again, a great feeling. It was, you know, special, as you say, the batters. Tough for them because then they've got to go out and do their job. But I was able to sit back down in my seat and just sort of have a couple of moments myself and just kind of try and soak it all in. How long did it take to soak it, to realise you've done such a great job? Your name is there forever in the history books. Oh, a long time, it's sort of, you're in the kind of heat of the game and you're worried about how the batsmen are going to go. As it turned out, we had to go back out and field that evening, which was never ideal. But yeah, it takes a while and it's it's just a nice memory to, to be able to show my kids. My kids came up that sort of two days later when they did the um, engraving. Um, so it was nice to show them and my wife and something that's, you know, they're going to be there forever to, to sort of signify that, that special one. It's a lovely, special special place to be, it's a home of cricket and you know, I think every cricketer, no matter where you play in the world, will want to be on one of these boards, so you know, to be able to say that I've done that is incredible. The result didn't go the way of Ireland, it was obviously triumphing, but what you did and what the team did, put Ireland cricket on the map, made a lot of the Irish team at the time feel like they belonged at the test match level, yeah. um, so a proud moment from that point of view, there's a big game coming up very soon, another test match, um, what are your thoughts? And what would your input and advice be to the team who are going to take the field against England here? Oh, you know, I think I'll be very jealous when that week comes around again. It's It was such a special moment for the 11 of us, well, not just the 11, the guys in the squad and the management in 2019. So they're all going to experience that this year. Um, and, you know, I'm lucky enough, I've been invited into the president's box to watch, watch day one. Um, so I'll be keeping a real kind of close eye on these guys and I'll you know, my advice would be just try and soak it in as much as you can. You never know if it will happen again. Um, so just taking that whole week, the whole kind of build up, try not to put too much pressure on yourself. Just go out there and, and sort of do what you do and just enjoy it and make your friends and, and family and the whole nation of Ireland proud. Do what you do. You did what you did. You're on the board. You're a legend. Test match five for pleasure. Thanks. Man. Loving Cheers. your work. Cheers.